We shouldn't be weakening oversight and accountability. We should be strengthening oversight and accountability. I'll give you another example. Too often we've seen Wall Street firms violating major anti-fraud laws because the penalties are too weak and there's no price for being a repeat offender. No more. I'll be calling for legislation that makes those penalties count so the firms don't see punishment for breaking the law as just the price of doing business. You know, the fact is, this crisis has left a huge deficit of trust between Main Street and Wall Street. And major banks that were rescued by the taxpayers have an obligation to go the extra mile in helping to close that deficit of trust. You know, at minimum, they should be remedying past mortgage abuses that led to the financial crisis. They should be working to keep responsible homeowners in their home. We're going to keep pushing them to provide more time for unemployed homeowners to look for work without having to worry about immediately losing their house. The big banks should increase access to refinancing opportunities to borrowers who haven't yet benefited from historically low interest rates. And the big banks should recognize that precisely because these steps are in the interests of middle class families and the broader economy, it will also be in the bank's own long-term financial interest. What will be good for consumers over the long term will be good for the banks. Yeah. <laughs> Investing in things like education that give everybody a chance to succeed. A tax code that makes sure everybody pays their fair share and laws that make sure everybody follows the rules. That's what will transform our economy. That's what will grow our middle class again. In the end, you know, rebuilding this economy based on fair play, a fair shot, and a fair share will require all of us to see that we have a stake in each other's success. And it will require all of us to take some responsibility it will require parents to get more involved in their children's education. It will require students to study harder. It will require some workers to start studying all over again. It will require greater responsibility from homeowners not to take out mortgages they can't afford. They need to remember that if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. It will require those of us in public service to make government more efficient and more effective, more consumer friendly, more responsive to people's needs. That's why we're cutting programs that we don't need to pay for those we do. That's why we've made hundreds of regulatory reforms that will save businesses billions of dollars. That's why we're not just throwing money at education, we're challenging schools to come up with the most innovative reforms and the best results. And it will require American business leaders to understand that their obligations don't just end with their shareholders. You know, Andy Grove, the, the legendary former CEO of Intel put it best. He said, there's another obligation I feel personally, given that everything I've achieved in my career and a lot of what Intel has achieved were made possible by a climate of democracy, an economic climate and investment climate provided by the United States. This broader obligation can, can take many forms. You know, at a time when the cost of hiring workers in China is rising rapidly, it should mean more CEOs deciding that it's time to bring jobs back to the United States. <laughs> you 
Not just because it's good for business, but because it's good for the country that made their business and their personal success possible. Yeah. I think about the big three auto companies who, during recent negotiations, agreed to create more jobs and cars here in America, and then decided to give bonuses not just to their executives, but to all their employees, so that everyone was invested in the company's success. I think about a company based in War Road, Minnesota. It's called Marvin Windows and Doors. During the recession, Marvin's competitors closed dozens of plants, let hundreds of workers go. But Marvin did not lay off a single one of their 4,000 or so employees. Not one. In fact, they've only laid off workers once in over 100 years. Mr. Marvin's grandfather even kept his eight employees during the Great Depression. Now, at Marvin's, when, when times get tough, the workers agree to give up some perks and some pay, and so do the owners. As one owner said, you can't grow if you're cutting your lifeblood. And that's the skills and experience your workforce delivers. For the CEO of Marvin's, it's about the community. He said, these are people we went to school with. We go to church with them. We see them in the same restaurants. Indeed, a lot of us have married local girls and boys. We could be anywhere. But we, we are in War Road. That's how America was built. That's why we're the greatest nation on earth. That's what our greatest companies understand. Our success has never just been about survival of the fittest. It's about building a nation where we're all better off. We pull together, we pitch in, we do our part. We believe that hard work will pay off that responsibility will be rewarded, and that our children will inherit a nation where those values live on. And it is that belief that rallied thousands of Americans to Osawatomie. Maybe, maybe even some of your ancestors, on a rain-soaked day more than a century ago, by train, by wagon, on buggy, bicycle, on foot, they came to hear the vision of a man who loved this country and was determined to perfect it. We are all Americans, Teddy Roosevelt told them that day. Our common interests are as broad as the continent. In the final years of his life, Roosevelt took that same message all across this country, from tiny Osawatomie to the heart of New York City, believing that no matter where he went, no matter who he was talking to, everybody would benefit from a country in which everyone gets a fair chance. And well into our third century as a nation, we have grown, and we've changed in many ways since Roosevelt's time. And the world is faster, and the playing field is larger, and the challenges are more complex. But what hasn't changed, what can never change, are the values that got us this far. We still have a stake in each other's success.
We still believe that this should be a place where you can make it if you try. And we still believe, in the words of the man who called for a new nationalism all those years ago, the fundamental rule of our national life, he said, the rule which underlies all others, is that on the whole and in the long run, we shall go up or down together. And I believe America is on the way up. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.